Hi, Travis. Welcome to 360 Art Drops channel. And uh, just wanted to hear a little bit about your journey into music and what got you into music production. Okay. Well, uh, first off, thanks for having me on. Um, it's, a, it's a short story and a long story. So I got into electronic music uh, when I was 17 years old. Um, and I first heard, uh, as you know, everybody's got their track. If you grew up in that time period, which that was, uh, I'll date myself a little bit, but I was not, it was 97, I think, maybe 98. And everybody's got the track that sort of like broke them into electronic music. And for me, it was uh, Out of Body Experience by Rabbit in the Moon on Hard Kiss, Delusion to Grandeur. That was the first electronic music I ever heard. And, oh, wow. Yeah. And, it's, and to say that it changed the course of my life would really kind of be an understatement. Um, I became just I'd never heard anything like it. Uh, it was this deep passionate music uh really rhythmic and so much going on and i just never experienced anything like it and i started going to raves with my friends took a well about a year and a half before i started wanting to learn how to dj and uh -huh. so a friend of mine and i um after i moved out of my parents house we managed to get turn get our hands on turntables and spent and that was back when there was no cdjs or anything like that it was vinyl only and so we had crates of records and had no idea what we were doing we were just train wrecking and making <laughs> god god awful noise for about a month and a half you know before we finally were like got the beat matched and we're like oh my gosh you know and so then i dj'd for from that time until i'd say when i got into production I was in San Francisco, so I grew up in Tennessee, uh -huh. and I left and moved to Sacramento for a while, and then I moved to San Francisco in 2004, Okay. and around 2006, I met a friend of mine, Kenneth Scott, and uh, I, I found, that was when I found techno, so I, I always thought techno was hard you know banging annoying music that was way too over the top and had no style or substance to it and then he actually played techno for me that was really good uh some really deep minimal stuff i ended up going to see alex smoke at a control party and uh that was before control moved over to the end up and i I was like, what is this? And it was like the, the old school rave days were, were back. It was like, this is like when I used to go to parties when I was younger, you know, when I was a kid. And my buddy's like, dude, this is what techno is all about. You know, it's like these big builds that then nothing happened. And all this tension was getting built up and built up and built up until finally it went off and people were losing it. And I was like, man, I want to learn how to do this. Yeah. Kenneth was really big into production. And so I got started basically by kind of piggybacking off of him and him kind of showing me a few little tricks and techniques and reason, uh -huh. um, which is the DAW that I used for a long time. And I made an album of Down Tempo. That was in 2008. Okay. And then from there, life happened. Uh, I produced for about another couple of years. And then life sort of got in the way. I ended up going through a lot with a relationship and a whole lot of wild crazy times and just kind of got distracted from making music went back to school for it for software development and that took up most of my time and then once i got kind of settled into my you know day job career and had all this extra free time and started really kind of processing what i'd been through in my life you know the the name of the label is shadow mind recordings and that's, you know, an, an ode to uh, Carl Jung and doing shadow work uh -huh. and really kind of like getting into what's going on with yourself. And as I started to do more of that, I started to get more of an interest in producing again. And it was a bit different because now, because of my career, I had plenty of money to invest in all the stuff <laughs> that you need to, to make digital music, you know? Right. And, um, 
I basically, since that was 2018 that I started again. And by 2019, I've since 2019, I've been producing nonstop. If I'm not nice. working, I'm in the studio. And it's like, it's something has gotten a hold of me where I just, I, it's almost a compulsion. Like I have to make tracks. Like it, it's something, it's like, if I'm not in the studio working, it's like, I'm not settled. Right. And this is the one place, this is the one place where I feel like everything is fine and like I'm right where I'm supposed to be, you know? Right. Uh, yeah. And um, this, particularly this, this studio I built, uh, I, I purchased this house as my first home and I bought it in 20, well, it was two years ago. So it would have been what, 2021 and summer, last summer, where are I you built now? This studio. I'm in Tennessee. Tennessee. So I'm in Northeast Tennessee. Do you know where Asheville, North Carolina is? Yeah, sort of. I've never been there, but I know of yeah. it. Yeah. So I'm an hour north of Asheville, North Carolina. Okay. So, yeah. So most of the places when I go out to hear music and stuff, I'm going to Asheville or Greenville, South Carolina. Um, I think, you know, Atlanta, but driving to Atlanta for parties was more of a young man's game. I don't go all the way to Atlanta that often anymore, but I love to go to Greenville, South Carolina. Greenville, South Carolina has really one of the best techno scenes that I've, that I've been around in years. Um, I was, I was thrilled when I moved back to the area and cause I thought that I would, you know, I had never heard the kind of music that I make and the kind of music that I'm really into now before I lived in San Francisco uh -huh. Um, I had no idea that sounds like that were even out there. Right. And, um, and when I got back in this area, I thought I'm never going to find music that I want to go and listen to, but I was very surprised and delighted to find out that in Greenville and Asheville, people are really doing a lot with minimal techno, like deep tech sort of sounds, um, the kind of four on the floor electronic genres that are really pushing the envelope as far as sound design and music theory and that kind of thing are concerned like ner nerd music really you know but like really good deep music for music nerds you know and I was really excited to have found that and so there's a there's a few uh, podcasts uh, and uh, a couple promotion companies that are really doing what are very amazing things um my friends, uh, my friend Will Cawthorn has a podcast called Frequency Underground, where he, I think he just got through doing his 150th episode. He has DJs do sets, fantastic music, great curator of different DJs around the Southeast. Um, and then Ash, then in Asheville, that's in Greenville. And then in Asheville, uh, Aiden Rolf is, uh, has synthetic it that is his podcast and he does the same thing. I was lucky enough to be featured on both of those. And then Pangea Productions put on a festival every year, or I'm sorry, Rethink Techno puts on a, a production every year called Pangea that it just feels like home to me, you know? Uh -huh. And so that's where I get my inspiration from to keep going, uh, to feel like I'm not just, screaming at a brick wall you know uh -huh. that I know that there's people out there who who hear it. and that's where I go when I'm feeling like I just need to get out of the house for a little while because I have so much of a hard time pulling myself away from the studio it's almost like I don't have a life outside of this room so yeah. I have to make sure that I go <laughs> I have to make sure that I go out and do some things every once in a while right um <clears throat> and so but with me doing all that production I, I, I created shadow mind recordings there wasn't really much of an impetus for it necessarily other than the fact that I was making all this music and I didn't really know how to shop tracks to other labels. Uh -huh. And I saw that it was pretty easy to start distributing stuff through some of these services like distro kid, whatever. And I took that leap of like, okay, well, I'm just going to start my own label. Um, also a friend of mine, Jason Haskins, who's the, one of the other artists on the label. Uh -huh. I've re I really believe in his music. And so it was also a way to take the mixing and mastering work that I'd done for him because he he's more of a composer and his music is absolutely incredible. And the first time I heard it, 
sometimes somebody asks you to mix and master their work and you feel uh -huh. complimented that they would right. even ask you. And that's the way I felt with him. And so it was really, it started out as just a vehicle to get our tracks out to the world. Uh -huh. But now I'm seeing it as my ticket away from the day job um, as a, you know, almost a, a one, not, I wouldn't say a one-stop shop, but a more of a music organization than just a record label because I teach other, I've been doing it at hardcore long enough now. I've have enough, I've almost got my 10,000 hours in. And so I'm teaching other producers. I'm ma mixing and mastering other people's tracks. Um, we're, I'm starting to pick up other artists besides just myself and Jason. And so Shadow Mind Recordings is, it's a record label for people who make a very specific vibe of music. And when you I say that, your classes on there as well. I, I, the class classes. So I got my LLC last year, and um, uh, cl classes are part of the label's income. Yeah. Okay. So it's it's separate from the label. Right. But I see the I see the label basically as marketing for all the stuff that we do with music. I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. we want to sell our records, we want to book shows, but we also are it's a way for producers to showcase their talent and their abilities so that if people want to learn from them, they can learn from them. I mean, we've got a lot of different stuff in the works. Like Jason and I are working on a live set right now. So we're putting together a, a live set in Ableton Live and also with some hardware. We work okay. together every Sunday. We just picked up another artist. Um, well, I don't want to say picked up an artist because I don't sign artists to exclusive contracts. I don't believe in that. I think it's wrong, you know, uh -huh. um, I'm a record label, not a pimp. So I don't think that, you know, I don't, you know, it's like, I don't want, <laughs> you know, if you want to put music out with somebody else, that's fine. Go right ahead. You know, but if you want to share some stuff with me, you can. Um, and a friend of mine uh, named Colton, his artist name is Storm Cell. And he makes a different genre of music um, than I do. And then Jason does. He, he makes kind of, I, I call it mystic trap. It's kind of like that, that, um, sort of like break beady almost like down tempo 70 or to 140 70 or 140 bpm stuff that has like a lot of uh ethnic um actually a lot of indian influence and stuff like that and it's very it like focused dubstep it's at all or kind of but like deeper it's like deep dub right oh, okay. it doesn't have the yeah it doesn't have that grinding sound to it um it, yeah people call it people call it mystic trap Deep dub, mystic dub, uh, storm cell. How do you spell it? Like a storm, like there's a storm coming, S T O R M, uh -huh. and then cell, like a cell in your body. So okay. S T O R M C E L L. Oh, okay. And so, yeah. And so he just submitted a track to us that I'm ex super excited to put to put out. It'll, we'll probably end up dropping that with a couple of remixes as well. Remixed by me, possibly remixed by Jason in um, probably, I'd say, with our current release schedule, maybe November is when we'll drop that. Um, if we can get it in earlier, we will, but I'd rather take my time and put it out and do it right. Right. Um, but what's cool and the, the concept behind my label is it's our, our sound is an aesthetic, not a genre right it's it's about the purpose behind the music it's about the vibe behind the music it's about the work the inner work and the the a life experience that the person had to have in order to reach that vibe and that music that they created and so, so it correlate with different genres you're saying yeah it can be any genre it just has to match the aesthetic of the label so minor keys emotive stuff that's dark but not heavy it's still pretty uh -huh. um you know it's because there's a lot of melodic techno out right now that people are calling it melodic techno and it really it's just progressive house and 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 it's good stuff but it's all a lot of it is very it's very bright it's very pollyanna you know it's it's just all about feeling good and uh -huh. shadow Mind recordings is more about expressing like real truth and uh, giving people a platform where they can express their hardship through music 
right and express right. what they've been through through music so that people can relate to it you know okay um yeah our tagline is sifting gems from darkness so that's oh, wow. why we're sh that's why we're shadow mind recordings right it's all about identifying with reflecting and perfecting that shadow side of yourself through music alchemizing those experiences into something bigger more beautiful and more lasting right and also an acknowledgement that beauty isn't necessarily always happy right pretty can be sad pretty can yeah. be intense pretty can be an emotion that you can't really put your name on but you know what you you know you feel it when you feel it right right and so that's the that's the kind of direction that we're looking for when artists submit anything to us that's what we want to see is that that okay you're actually really saying something of substance here i don't care if it's 70 bpm 120 bpm 175 bpm i don't care you know if it's drum and bass or trap or dubstep or house or techno i, I care about what are you saying and okay. does is it re, does it resonate with what the rest of us on the label are saying right so right. that's that's really intense and beautiful thank you appreciate that i like I really to think so i hope so i hope it just i hope it i hope we get there you know it's a constant struggle trying to per, trying to perfect what you're trying to do and trying to trying to create that that composition that is worthy of your creator, you know, of taking so, this life and turning some, turning into something. What, what would you say are the key skills that you need to know, like right in your current, in your current state of your shadow mind records? Well, the current, the, to do what I'm currently doing or to do what I need to, what I need to, to do. So like, it's a, so right now, um, what I do is I, I do mixing, mix downs, you know, mix engineering, mastering, sound design, sound engineering, production and composition. Uh, I, I, I work with artists. I wouldn't call myself an A&R, but it's the beginnings of an a and R. I'm not a big enough label to say I have a, I'm an A&R right now, but that's uh -huh. part of it. And then I'm taking marketing courses, right? So the the way I'm looking at it, the I think most musicians who really care about the craft of music, we don't want to do marketing. We don't want to sell music. We want to make music and somebody else can sell it, right? Yeah. But that's but that's not really in today's landscape, that's not how it works. Like if you really want to get yourself out there, you have, you to, have to market yourself. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And and you have to get into all that. You have to do the business of the music, which is the it's not the fun part, but it's the necessary you part. Have to do it. Yeah. If you want to make a living from it, if you want it to be more than a hobby, then you do. And and for me, I need it to be more than a hobby because I need to be in the studio. It's a it's it's a it's not a want, it's a need. I, it's I like need a, to be making for need for sanity. Mm hmm For just oh. it's, yeah, it's like it's just it's like almost like a compulsion, like I say, you know, and I want to be able to be in the studio as much as possible, which means I need to be making a living for music, which means I have to do the business. Right. So, I mean, so you, you've kind of explained already how your styles evolved over the years. Did you want to add anything else to that um, question? Well, um, yeah, I mean, it started with 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 breaks in a house uh, in when I was young and then became uh, I got really into down tempo and stuff like that for a really long time. Uh, and then, but I'm still am, I'll, and I'll, and I love '90s hip hop. So the, all those influences are there in my in my music. But um, yeah, everything sort of changed in San Francisco in in 2008 uh, when I started getting into minimal and tech house. That's the majority of what I make, but I also make breaks and and drum and bass and all kinds of different stuff. Um, but I would say what I do right now is sort of an amalgamation of all my influences over the years, but with a very heavy focus on like deep tech is what I call it, you know, okay. 120, 125 BPMs, four on the floor. Yeah. Um, are you running any other small businesses besides music? Well, besides the label, there's the, the producer education 
uh, mixing and mastering for tracks that aren't part of the label. No, I'm not running any other businesses. I don't even know where it's I would find the time. <laughs> <laughs> i mean i would like to if once i get away from my day job it would be nice to do woodworking i'd like to learn how to do woodworking and make furniture and stuff like that but um no yeah i'm i'm doing it work i'm a i'm a business i I no longer write code i wrote code and worked slave like 60 hours a week for about five or six years and paid my dues and at Uh this point i do what's called it business analysis i talk to I talk to enterprise level corporations about problems that they need software to solve. And I gather the requirements for what the software is going to do to solve the problem. Um, And that's like my day job. And so it's pretty easy actually compared to being an actual developer and it's 40 hours a week. So, you know, that, that takes up any time I would have to run another business. Um, Do you think in the future you might run another business? Yeah, actually, I'd like to engineer plugins. Okay. So, uh, like, you know, for making music, so like synth and effects plugins. I'd like, since I do know a lot about writing software and managing software projects, and because I was a software architect before I'm doing what I'm doing now. Right. Uh, for, for the day job, anyway. And I, I think it'd be really cool to make plugins, you know, to, to, to create the instruments that I wish I had that I, that, that, I that are not find. of existence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That and, and possibly some IT consulting, um, you know, helping people with websites. Just if I ever needed to do stuff like that to make ends meet or whatever. But the goal right now is to pay off any debt that I owe, which I don't have very much left uh, within the next year to year and a half. Uh, quit working for anyone else and start focusing on shadow mind recordings and all the music based stuff full time and give myself a, a year to try to get to where I'm self sustaining and if and 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 then keep going forever after that. So I hope I hope that all comes true for you. Me too. Thank you so much. <laughs> Now, um, how long? What's what? what I want to ask you about your podcast. Like, uh, what what's your goal with it, and what have you been doing with that? Um, well, you're my 16th podcast, and okay. I are interview artists, um, musicians, healers, and I guess anyone who's in the artist world in any way. It doesn't have to be art or music, but um, it could be any type of version, like poetry, woodwork, laser cutting, like any any type of art, pretty much. And so you talk to creative people, basically. Yeah, yeah. Any type of that must be great. Yeah, it's really nice to hear uh, other people's perspectives, points of view, their journeys. And um, I I just I'm doing it because uh, I'm also an artist myself. I paint um, paint and do a lot of digital art since Mm -hmm. I was like 20. And now I'm 42. Um, I'll be 43 in November. And um, I'm just I'm just looking to connect Um, since I'm in India. There's not a lot of. festivals out here or there are but they're all trans related which is i'm sorry but i don't like trans yeah it's so it's not your fault it's okay (laughs) we like what we like you know you're you're not you're not obligated for your ears to enjoy things that they don't enjoy but i I basically Uh, like almost every other genre except for trans and that's the only festivals they have out here um it's all it's all goa yeah, go Goa, Goa. they have Goa side trance. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So it's all trance. And um I would like to come and visit uh the US again because I've been away for five years. I went through a domestic violence incident in 2018 and it changed my life and I moved out here for five years. And I, I hope to maybe come back one day. I'm not really sure. Uh, if I would or not, but I definitely going to come visit and come visit all the festivals and at least connect with people in a, in a real live way, you know? Uh Uh-huh. So, well, if you can ever, if you can ever get here, 
for in June for Pangea, I would love to show you Pangea. I think that you would, if you're like artists and you're into art and things like that, it's the most amazing party. Like I've been to, I can't even count the number of, of underground parties I've been to. I've never been a big festival person. Um, I'm especially like the big, huge mega festivals. I like, oh. I like, I like to go to small, like underground you know, base, basements, undergrounds. Yeah, warehouses. Yeah, I used to know, love but... that too, but I just don't know. Like, I don't know of any. Um, yeah, I'd have to get but, reconnected somehow, either through. Pangea is like something. that. Pangea yeah. is like that, but in the woods. Oh, so okay. it's yeah, it's really cool. Like everybody is so down. It's not a huge crowd. I think it's maybe like. 300 people 400 people or something like that for the whole yeah, weekend. sometimes the huge crowds scare me they're just too much and and you can't connect i don't i feel like in a large 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 crowd like that that vibe that sense of community that you want to hit where you're just blessed out with everybody else who's enjoying themselves and everybody's on the same wavelength and and you can really djs or live live performers can really take everybody together somewhere right and kind of conduct this train to a magical place it's very hard once you get up over a thousand people or really even up over 500 people to be able to achieve that level of amazing right like you can have a great time you can see these great big huge visuals and everything and wow this music sounds so good everything's so loud everything looks so cool but that very, very special moment in time, I feel like is it's hard to reach with when you got thirty thousand people. You know? Well the only yeah. big crowd that I wouldn't just you know, I wouldn't disengage with is the tool concerts. I need to go I've to never a been tool, to a tool concert. I need yeah. to go to a tool concert. <laughs> Have you been to one before? No, never. Yeah, yeah. I've never, I've never, never been, I have never to go. I mean, I've been to Radiohead and some other concerts, but you know, you know, it's like what you said. The vibe, I you don't get that closeness with that, you know, type of, mm -hmm. you know, concerts and stuff like that. Still, I would like to go though to the yeah. Tool concert. No, they're, it's, they're fun. I'd, I'd, I'd like to go. I don't even really listen to Tool that much, but I would like to go to a Tool concert just because their their music is so intricate and, and crazy. I'm, I'm sure I would enjoy myself. They have you ever been to Detroit? Like, huh? Sorry? Have you, have you been to Detroit? Did you ever go to Detroit when you were here in the States, the big music um, festival? Maybe Detroit? once, but not for any festival type of things. It was just Good. to visit family. Good. If you ever get a chance to go to that, that's it's really worth it. the The whole city becomes accessible for like. Are you talking three about days. the the, G, the D E M F? Mm -hmm. but, yeah, yeah. It used to be dump. Now it's movement. Yeah, um, yeah. The whole city becomes a, a party basically, and then when the when the festival shuts down in the day, and closes down until the next day, then the after parties start, and you right. can get that intimate vibe at the after parties, even though there's a lot of people there. You know, it's still it, it has it's like it's like a whole bunch of people, but the vibe is still very underground. It's it's a really oh, nice. it's a very very cool it's a very very cool experience. Yeah, yeah, um, I feel like it's taxing yet. on the body, but but fun. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I definitely will hit you up and try to see. Um, maybe we can uh, go to one together. So um, yeah, if you're ever here, if you're ever in the states, let, look me up for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um. So what? What advice would you give to starting out musicians, whether they're starting out with you or they're starting out in general? I mean, that's probably got to be two different types of advice. Um, not really. Um, okay. I mean, well, starting out with me, starting out with me would mean that you've already started out, right? You've already, you've already gotten like at least kind of sort of started. Um, I do, t I do teach beginner level courses, but typically rather than take somebody's money who's just starting, I'm just going to send them like all kinds of good material for them to get their feet wet and then say, you know, get down the concepts in this video or whatever, put a track together. And then when you have that ready, send it to me. And if I can help you with it, I will. Right. Cause with the way that I teach people is I'll look at the tracks that they've made with them and help them understand where they're doing things that are going to cause their production not to sound professional so that's kind of what i do as a as a teacher um when it comes to 
just starting out. So, and I can't really speak to if you're a guitarist or, you know, if you're doing live type of music or you're playing uh -huh. an instrument, I mean, for that, it's just practice, 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 practice is really what you need to do with electronic musicianship. It's kind of the same advice. And this actually, this piece of advice actually changed things for me very rapidly. So um, a lot of people, a lot of times when people start out, they make a eight bar loop or a 16 bar loop and they fiddle with it and they don't really know what to do from there. Right. Okay. My, the best piece of advice I was ever given, and I just got it from a YouTube video of a guy who was in his forties and was, his message was, it's never too late basically. And I was like in my late thirties when I saw this and I was like, Oh, thank God. And, um, his advice and and it's my advice as well now is just finish tracks. I wish somebody had told me that years and years sooner, just finish tracks. Don't, create an idea, fiddle with it, and then start up another idea, finish tracks, like do, you know, do the, the, and even if it's crap, you know, just get to the end of the song, right? Like do right. your, in, do your intro and your breakdown, your first breakdown and your buildups and your transitions from one thing to another. And it's going to be crappy at first. I mean, it, that's just how it goes. Like you have to sound like shit before you sound good, you know? Right. And and don't be afraid to sound like crap. Don't don't overestimate your skills. Don't think like, oh, I like how this sounds. I'm doing so great. Like be humble and realize you're a beginner and that you have a lot to learn and finish tracks. And like, and when you get to the to the end of one and it's finished, if it's crap, it's crap. That's fine. You finished it. You know, if it's a complete musical idea, you finished your song do another one and everything that you learned from finishing that first one is going to help you finish the second one and make it sound even better and just stay on that. And then, and that, and then literally after doing that for years, three, two, three, four years, you'll reach a point where, okay, where your, your focus shifts to, instead of just finishing one track after the other, you start having multiple tracks going at a time. And so you start two or three ideas, you work on one, the next day you work on a, the other one, next day you work on the other one, and you rotate them in a cycle so that you can finish more tracks more often. But that's once you hit like an upper intermediate stage, right? Okay. In the beginning, just, in the, I cannot stress it enough, in the beginning, just finish tracks. It's Create like, like somebody, they have songs. to finish a painting before they move to the next one. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I would imagine it is. I'm not a painter, but I would imagine it's very much the same way with painting. If you just keep starting half a painting and wasting <laughs> canvas, you know, you're going to be broke and you're going to have <laughs> you're going to have a bunch of canvases with unfinished ideas on them that aren't good for you or anybody else. Right. So same thing with music. Yeah. So what's your favorite memory? Is it Pangea or do you have another favorite memory of like an event and a, or a favorite a favorite track that you produced that you're the most proud of wow okay um favorite memory musically I'm, I'm gonna answer i'm gonna answer all three of those questions i'm gonna answer each one from a different perspective so the first one i'm gonna answer is my favorite memory of making music like of just me making music Okay. So I'm a I'm a pretty spiritual person. Um, I I have faith. I'm I'm a I'm a I guess I'm what you would call a mystical Christian. I don't go to church and things like that, but I believe in the divinity of Christ and I read the Bible and all that sort of thing. And I I believe very strongly in the power of the Holy Spirit. That's really the the crux of what I believe in spiritually is the is the Holy Spirit. And there was a time in my old studio at my old at the place I lived here, at before here where I was in a very good habit that I need to get back into of inviting the Holy Spirit into the studio before I got started working. So I would do a little bit of Bible study or, or you know, read some verses, and then I would pray and just say, you know, I just want you here with me, God, like, please come into the studio. And there was a time when I was, I had done that, and I was working on a track, 
And I literally, I really did feel the Holy Spirit enter the room and what the track that I was working on completely changed in the way that it sounded. I just started kind of going where I felt like my hands were being guided. And the next thing I knew, I had this beautiful track with these horns that were playing, sounding like Gabriel's trumpets in heaven or something like that, which I was not where I was trying to go with the track at all. And it was so good. And I was so thrilled about it and so happy with what was happening that I just by myself in my studio, I just started laughing out loud, just this incredibly abundant laughter. It's an experience I will never forget. Um, and I hope to, to, to get to a point where I'm right enough with the big guy upstairs that I'm recreating that experience on a nearly daily basis. Uh -huh. But that I would say, as far as making music, that's probably my favorite memory okay. as of right now. Um, as far as going to see music or being part of a musical environment, San Francisco from and you can ask anybody who was in the techno and scene in San Francisco in 2007, 2008, whether or not it was a magical time in the world. And they will right. answer you and say, yes, it's, uh, it's undeniable for anybody who was there that something took place. There was this renaissance musically because San Francisco had always been house, deep house and West coast house town. Um, and for years and years and years. And, and as, as a result of what, some really amazing guys uh, that were running a group called Control, um, Lon Bialo, B uh, Craig Kuna, Clint Stewart, and um, uh, Greg Bird were 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 doing this party called Control. And they were really techno was becoming a thing in San Francisco, and it was really. And then that was when Dirty Bird released that track. You know, who's afraid of Detroit? Kind of being like, you know, we're not afraid of Detroit. We make techno too. Kind of declaration. And I remember was this, going to the end of several times during that time. Yeah, so, it was, was it not incredible? Like when I first went to a rave, it was 1999. So it kind of sinks a little bit with your music like history. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and so during that time, like 2007, 2008, yeah, the end up, that was where control was after it started off in a little warehouse and then uh, it moved to, to the end up. And then 222 Hyde, which was a, a bar that uh, my friend uh, EO eventually bought and um, had a residency there. And there were just, I really felt like we were in this, and when I look back on it now, I feel like it was this just this very, you know, sometimes we're having this subjective experience, you know, where this, where this universal consciousness, Christ consciousness embodied in, in, in human bodies and having this experience where we get a, our own it we get, we're we're all just looking at our own reflection from a very special vantage point and the the vantage point at that time i feel like if you were there in that place and go into those events and part of that musical renaissance that you were in a very 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 special like once in a millennia time in in human existence and music yeah i don't think San Francisco part of something is really the way special. that it is anymore no, i have to thank no. you for being on the podcast um mm -hmm. it's, i have less than a minute uh, i have to upgrade to pro and i haven't done it yet i got so, you no no problem i'm too talkative sometimes so. but <laughs> i just i enjoyed talking to you very very much no i enjoyed you. talking with you too um we'll, we'll have to do this again i would love to yeah thank yeah. you Okay, well, thank right, we'll you take, so 